Three, two, one. What up, guys? Your boy Quake, and welcome to season one, episode one of the Diverse Mentality Podcast, titled "My Name Is." In homage to Eminem, of course, my name is from his song. On this podcast episode, I just want to introduce myself and my co-host, and we're going to talk about our journey, and then we're going to talk about what we're expecting out of this podcast and what kind of artists and celebrities we want on here, and just the journey of what, what's going to happen throughout this podcast. Thank you to the day one listeners, the first listeners. You guys know me as Quake from Diverse Mentality. If you've been watching my YouTube content, you know um, I've been doing that since, I think, uh, April of 2017, so about a little over three years now. If you're coming from there, you definitely know my content and how I like to talk about hip-hop. Obviously, it's my number one passion. We're going to talk about how I even got to it being my number one passion, but I've been doing this in terms of a business relating to hip-hop since 2008, so I've been doing this for quite some time. Seems like I'm a veteran now at this point, even though I'm so young. Uh, we're going to talk about all of that. But you guys know me as Quake, of course. So let me introduce my co-host, Vito. Say what's up. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Vito. Uh, that's V-E-T-O without an I. Thank you. Yeah, so shout out to Vito, my actual brother, not like a brother from another mother. I'm excited to be here, man. But yeah, I want to talk about the journey of how exactly I fell in love with hip-hop and you know where exactly that happened at. So I was born in April of 1995. So I'm about 25 years old now. So a lot of you probably assumed I was a lot older because of my knowledge in this thing called hip hop. I just love it so much that, you know, I, I wanted to learn everything about it from beginning to end and give that to you guys in forms of content because a lot of people just don't really focus on the details of things. And I like details. I'm very detail oriented. Then uh, fast forward to uh, summer of 1999. Uh, there was a war in my home country called Kosovo, and from there, we ended up getting put in the craziest thing. We got put in Iowa. Iowa, dude. We got put in Iowa, dog. In Iowa. In Iowa. That's, that's the I'm craziest laughing, thing, bro, yeah. Out of all the states, they the put United us in states. Iowa, dog. In Iowa. That's so, we oh, got, man. from the war, um, we well, got Shout put, out to Iowa, man. Yeah, shout out to Iowa. No disrespect. I love that place. I was raised there for 15 years, but after the war, they put us randomly in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, for 16 years, we lived there, and I want to talk about my journey of, from living there, how I fell in love with hip-hop. Out of all the states, you know, a lot of different states had more influences in hip-hop, but Iowa didn't really have that. So let's get into that. Um, the first time where, where I noticed, you know, I loved hip-hop music, and when I feel like, okay, this is my passion, was obviously 50 Cent. 50 Cent is my favorite artist. He's the one that introduced me to hip-hop. The first record I heard was 21 Questions. Yes. And that thing was, man, that record was amazing. For me as a kid, I didn't know what it was talking about, but I just loved the record so much. Um, and then from there, I asked my sister, I was like, buy me the album that has this song. I didn't know anything about 50 Cent. She ends up buying me the clean version of Get Rich or Die Trying. And ever since then, I fell in love with hip hop. And that's the same journey for my brother. He's the exact same, same thing. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he he started loving hip hop because of Get Rich or Die Trying, and yeah. we consider that album a classic. Oh, hundred you know? percent. And in my definition, doubt. a classic is listening from top to bottom, the best tracks. It's, you know, it's, every it's track everything. Everything's my favorite. Good. Yeah, like so I can repeatedly listen. Exactly. To this. So from there, um, I started getting acquainted. I remember you telling me when I was watching the Fifty Cent in the Club video, yeah. you were telling me uh, Fifty Cent was oh, getting. Yeah. Uh, actually surgery performed on it. As a kid, I was gullible, so I didn't know. You know, I was, like, taking it serious. Like, wow, this guy's half robot. He was telling me he's half Great robot. Place. Yeah, so <laughs> he was lying the whole time as a kid. I didn't know, though. But um, so from there, you know, I started doing more and more, you know, deep diving into things. And I started learning about T.I. and Jeezy and Game and uh, who else? Ludacris at the time and Nelly and even Ja Rule at that time. We were Ja Rule, yeah, like he was hot. all kind. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. We all those in the early two thousands, we were going crazy. So this is around two thousand two, two thousand three, and I just knew at that moment, man. I was like, man, I, you know, I want to know more about this. You know, what is this? And um, our parents, um, they couldn't really afford cable on and off, so we'd have cable on and off sometimes. Right. And through cable, we ended up watching um, BT's Rap City. Yep. And then, uh, what That's is correct. it, MTV's uh, TRL, TRL, and then BT's 106 and Park. Yep. And from there, you know, I started 
learning more about artists, but we would only have cable for about, I think, eight months, would it be? Yeah, it would be a couple months off for a couple months. Yeah, couple so months. Yeah, so crazy. I would miss out on a lot, you know, with no internet at the time. I didn't, well, there was internet, but I, as a kid, wasn't using it at the time. So it was something completely uh, foreign to me. I was still trying to learn it. And I remember, um, I believe 2007, we got cable back again. I remember seeing Young Buck, his music video, I Know You Want Me. Yeah. And I was like, damn, G, when it's back, you know, I love this Buck yeah. record. And then I skipped this moment, but in 2006, my sister, once again, shout out to my sister, she bought me um, a computer. And that just, dude, that opened the floodgates for everything for sure me. Did, um, yep. I started learning YouTube. Uh, I started learning more about hip hop. Everything on the internet, you know, I started typing faster. I used to be yeah. horrible typer. But I learned everything you, on there. You were glued to that computer. Yeah, I would not like my they, just, even my parents were like, dude, like go outside, go see some sun. Like, what are you yeah. doing? And then from there, um, I built my own hip hop website at the age of twelve. I first called it This Is Southside. I want to explain why because <laughs> that name is pretty bad. That's a horrible name. Um, the reason why I called it that was because on YouTube, uh, I remember Fifty repping his hood Southside Fifty, and I was like. Bro, I just want to call this, you know, this is Southside. It sounds so dope. And it pays homage to 50 and all that. And uh, the website was horrible. It got, like, no traffic at all. And, yeah, it was just bad. And then I built the second website, and this is how I got my name, Quake. The second website was called hiphopquake.com. And nobody knew anything about me, so they assumed I was just some older guy who, um, you know, knew, you know, because I knew history and hip-hop there, so... They just assumed I was this older guy who was just posting hip-hop content and talking about it. But in the chat box, they didn't know my name or age, anything. So they just called me Quake. They took the hip-hop Quake part and just took Quake and called me that. And then I just ended up running with it at that point. Um, and then from there, I started my next website, DiverseHipHop.com. And this was the really successful one. I used YouTube as a leverage to build that website up. What I would do is I would even skip school sometimes to do this. Um, I would find music videos that are coming out, something that's big. And I remember Eminem coming back in 2009 with Relapse, and he dropped a music video for We Made You. And I, I skipped class to be able to post it on YouTube first. I ended up getting the top spot on YouTube. And when I got the top spot on YouTube, um, you know, I, I put there used to be annotations on YouTube. I put those on there to go to DiverseHipHop.com. And everybody went there, and I remember getting at one point one million unique visitors which is insane like that means unique means it's wow. one million individual people yeah. which was crazy the traffic was insane um from there what else i believe i got more into youtube i started learning more i started building hip-hop like rapper channels like i would pretend like i'm j cole or rick ross or any rapper that was popping at that time and i would build those youtube channels up to 40 50 000 subscribers and then that actually set off diverse mentality yeah. Uh, that the, the channel that you guys know now as Diverse Mentality was a former J. Cole channel. And that channel I converted in 2017 from a full J. Cole channel to Diverse Mentality as we know it now. And that was a great boost for my um, career and everything when I was doing it. So At that time also you were making those uh, with the songs, like you put out a song and then just create video with yeah a bunch of thank you for reminding yeah fan made videos fan -made. what what ended up happening too is how You're i learned doing a good job with that yeah how i learned to video edit at a young age was that i would take on youtube um songs that didn't have music videos so let's just say g units right. piano man off tos it didn't have a music video so i would take clips from you know different g unit music videos or 50 banks whatever the case is i would take clips and combine them to make it look like the official video. And this actually, I didn't know at the time, was teaching me how to video edit. And now that's why I can video edit my own content on YouTube. Now I hired somebody, shout out to Josh. I hired him um, to get, you know, to do the video editing. So shout out to him. But now, you know, that's how I got to be able to do the video editing on a channel. But that's how I really got into hip hop. That's how, you know, my passion started. Uh, it's been igniting forever. I'm lucky to find my passion at such a young age. You know, some people never find it ever. So that's how I really got into it. That's been my journey. And as you guys know now, we just started a podcast, a whole new journey. Thank you to everybody that supports us, that's listening right now. I really appreciate it. Thank you um, much, love. What's next? We're going to get into, sorry for saying um a lot. I'm just getting used to it. So I've been saying that a lot, but I apologize. Hopefully down the road, I stop saying that as much. Um, but 
Next is why. Why did we do the podcast, right? Yes. So why did we do the podcast? Well, on YouTube, everything is limited, right? The content, you know, I am... When people watch a YouTube video, they're not really expecting me to rant on for, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes about a certain topic. They just want to watch whatever their the title says, and then they want to leave, and they're done. That's at least most people. So on the podcast, you have a free roaming, you know, platform where people expect it to be at least at minimum over 30 minutes. So this podcast, we're going to try to aim for an hour each episode. So... That's why I wanted to start the podcast. Plus, I wanted to interview artists directly so I can get it from the horse's mouth and know, excuse me, exactly, you know, what their journey was and get into great details about that. Um, why do you think, you know, what's another reason why we started the podcast? What is, what are you thinking? Um, there's quite a few, but. I mean, just also, um, like how we talked about one of the reasons being um, up and co- upcoming artists. Yes. want to show up. Yeah. A lot of, you know. So yeah, on, on the YouTube channel, I would get a lot of emails. I mean, a lot of emails of new artists that want to shine on the channel, but I didn't want right. to do it in a, in like a whack way where I just show like a 20, 20 to 30 second right. clip and say, yo, go check this guy out. If I really like the content, I want to be able to bring them on here and just tell their story. You know, these people are new. Most people probably haven't heard their story. So that's why I also started to kind of bring a whole new generation and introduce them, you know, introduce them to a newer, bigger audience I feel and, like, and the older generation. Right. Too. Sorry to cut you off, man. I feel like there's a lot of upcoming artists, you know, that are slept on. That's you know, a there, fact. There's, yeah. there's a lot of good ones out there, man. That's, that's a they fact. need to be heard. Exactly. So that's another reason why. But those are the main reasons, I guess, uh, just to have a free roaming platform. Yeah. So the expectations. What can you guys expect schedule episodes all that what kind of platform so first expect every saturday roughly an hour episode every single saturday when we have a guest there's going to be two episodes that week we're going to try to release two episodes that week one 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 episode that week is going to be with the guest and then every saturday is going to be us you know talking about whatever news whatever topic it is and then you guys can chime in too when you guys are listening to this hit me up on social media quake gw you guys can message me and say, hey, I would like to see this on a podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, the two cameras that are paying, focusing on me, we have it on YouTube platform as well. If you're watching it on YouTube, leave a comment below and let me know uh, what kind of content you guys want to see. Because right. in terms of platforms, we're going to have it on YouTube video version. And then we're going to have it on every streaming platform we can possibly put it on. Spotify, Apple Music, uh, whatever, whatever else. I can't really think of any other platform right now, but... Every platform we can have it on. So that's the expectations of this. Expect just really free roaming thoughts about what we think about current music, right. artists, things like that. People's feelings get hurt. It's just an opinion, guys. Right, Don't no. get too offended. I'm not the holy sayer of everything. So um, that's what the expectations are. Now, I want to get into the artists that we want on the yeah. show um, and the top celebrities that we want. Let me get the list quick. It's over yes. here. And by the way, this is not in a, this is just a random list. It's not in some kind of order or anything like that. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing this in any order. I numbered it off, but it's definitely not in any order. Um, If I didn't mention your favorite artist on this list, it's not that I don't want him on here. That's not the case at all. Um, It's just, this is what we have as a list. So number one, 50 Cent, obviously uh, he's been a huge influence to me, business, music, everything. I love everything the guy's done and what better interview, yeah, you know, from me, the guy who knows the guy. Like, have you seen my documentaries on him? Right. I know, like, this whole story. So for me, it would be an insane interview. You I would need up on him. Too, yeah, so. I would need at least two hours minimum with him. Oh, 100%. minimum. So please that would be yeah. 50, Please give us two hours. <laughs> 50, Fifty, if you're somehow two listening. Hours. To this. Yeah. God bless you. <laughs> exactly. God bless your soul. <laughs> so G Unit would obviously fall into that. Uh, we have Lloyd Banks. We have Tony Ayo, obviously Young Buck. DJ Who Kid, Sha Money XL, I would love to talk to as well. All those, Lloyd Banks, one of my favorite artists of all time, one of the yeah. best lyric, you know, lyrical Thank artists. Uh, he unfollowed me on Twitter, unfortunately, but it's all good, Banks. I hope me. I think he saw my What Happened 2 video on him. He just never really responded to him. It's reached over a million views, so shout out to Banks. Shout out but to Yayo, Banks. too. I love Yayo's loyalty. I love his yeah. ad libs. He's oh, a man. beast, man. I love Yayo. Yeah, Young Buck. Very loyal guy. Yeah, so. 
that's that's so number one is 50 and G unit obviously um 100 number two this is one of my favorite artists of all time chameleon air the reason why i say that his mixtape catalog and his second album to me is a classic now let me explain what i categorize as a classic quick for me a classic is a album that i can listen to top to bottom without skipping at all that's how i cat that's 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 to me that's the definition of a classic for other people it might be you know if you can skip a couple of tracks or you know whatever if it's if it's it lasts a long time and you can still listen to it. Some people say that's a classic, but for me, it has to be top to bottom. I can't skip a single track. I love everything. So that's why I like Chameleon Air. His second album, Ultimate Victory, to me is a classic. I can listen to that top to bottom and it's just perfect. No cussing at all, which is hard to do in hip hop. Usually people you know, have to cuss to get their point across. Chameleon Air didn't do that. So I love Ultimate Victory. I love his mixtape catalog. I put it up against Lil Wayne and 50 Cent as the top mixtape people. Um, and I actually had a conversation with Chameleon Air, you know. Uh, he's been very cool, man. A cordial person. Amazing. Uh, if I can get him on here, it would be a dream come true because I have a lot of questions to talk, you know, and ask him and talk about. Yeah, and I like how he went from music, now he's doing business, like real Yeah, business. very business smooth. Guy. Yeah. And I remember people actually clowning him for yeah, that. Yeah. People were like, oh, he fell off. He's not making hits. And then he ends up selling an app for four hundred million, yeah. M- million cash money, rich cash dang. money. So that's Oof. you know he he would have never made that in music, you know, unless you're selling records like Michael Jackson, you're not making four hundred million dollars off music. There's no artist right now that I know is making four hundred million just strictly off music every year. That's not happening. So shout out to him and his in transition. That's what I would love to talk to him about. Yes, Number sir. three, Akon. Of course, man. very Akon. simple. Akon lighting Africa. Huge, you know, huge thing that he's doing for Africa. His journey from music to philanthropy to business, all that, I would love to talk to him about. His business sense, signing T-Pain, Lady Gaga, building this convict empire. Uh, I love Akon. I love his music, too, his albums. I love Freedom, which is his third album that he released. Every album he drops, never never disappointing. Yeah, never. Yep. So I love Akon's music and everything. Good artist. Yeah, he's just all around. Great person, man. Yeah, so Akon, number three. Number four, J. Cole for me. My brother had Drake as number four, but yeah. same thing, essentially. I don't know what I mean. Yeah, so, yeah, we're just putting out artists, what we thought. So, J. Cole, obviously, I consider um, Born Sinner a classic to me. That's another. So let me point out the four I albums. Think a lot of people say the same. Some people like 2014 Hor- Forest Hills Drive, which is his next album after that, more than Born Sinner. But when I heard Born Sinner, to me, man, top to bottom, I loved it. I want to let me let me explain my four classic. I only have four classic albums. I know people are going to get pissed at this list, but it can grow over time. It just is what it is. This is my opinion. Get Rich or Die Trying, uh, Chameleonaire's Ultimate Victory, J. Cole's Born Sinner, and then Kevin Gates' mixtape Luca Brassi 3. Those four I can listen to top to bottom, not skip a single track. So all, the, all those four albums are classics to me. Since J. Cole has one of them, I love J. Cole's music. I love his message. I love how chill he is as a person. Yeah, yeah, that's the, you know, yeah, he's, he's roaming right now he's in so New York. Like just chill and normal and just, you know, just regular. Sh- no chains everywhere. And yeah, just a regular you know, just guy, man. Cool, man. Yeah, so. Not that it's wrong to wear chains or anything like that, but. You know, it's just, different. Yeah, you, know, you don't see it often, different. you know. Um, so then yeah. Drake is the next one. Obviously, Drake is the biggest yeah, artist right now out. For over a decade. Huge Non-stop. longevity. Yeah, huge, huge longevity. longevity. Huge. Everything um, he drops is... And then he gives other people number one records. That, too. Yeah. That's hard he to do, jumps man. on those people. And that's the thing. When people when people mention, you know, Drake doesn't write, you can't... If you don't write, you can't give other people hit records because you can't write. So yeah, that's... That, 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 point, that narrative that he can't write because of a few tracks where he's, you know, had a little help, that doesn't mean that he can't write. Right. If he's given other artists hit records, you can write. So that, that whole narrative his is... His team... Yeah, team yes. Is the greatest team I've ever I want to pick his brain about that because yeah, building would. a solid team where nobody turns on you since day one. Since day one with forty, everybody else over there, I can't think of everybody's name, but yeah, um guy's name. so it's just crazy. His team has never been disloyal to him or turned right. on him when they had beefs with the different artists, when Pusha T did what he did. So I wanna prick his brain about how he got his team around him. That would be really interesting. Uh, number six, Kevin Gates. Kevin I Gates. Let me say this, right? A lot of people have this misconception about Kevin Gates because of the headlines he has. He's kind of all over the place. But 
I love his interviews, man. The interviews that he gives is something so different and unique. It's like on a different, you know, different level. It's just yeah. different. I don't know what, what the word even is to say, really. <laughs> it's just, it's insane. When you when he does interviews, you can question, you know, say a question or whatever, and he'll answer that, and then he'll expand it. And then you'll just have a regular conversation with him. It won't even feel like an interview. I've seen that happen with every interview of his, and I love his music. To me, like I said, Luca Brasi 3 is a classic to me. Uh, his music has helped my life. Um, it's very motivational. He's been through a lot. He's very open about that. And just, you know, I love his journey and what he's been through. So Kevin Gates, yeah. Eminem is the next one. There's really nothing, you know, what, what are you going to say? You know, Eminem is the biggest selling artist of all yeah, time. Just... Lots of history. That's the thing. Like, I love, yeah. I love, you know, I want to ask him questions about, like, when he met 50 or... You know, when he was with Dr. Dre, you know, shooting, you know, forgot about Dre. Did something crazy happen? You know, just all kinds of random questions that I want to ask him and his journey. So, yeah, I wonder how many records he's got that he just, they're just. Hasn't sick. released. Yeah. Yeah. That's another that's point. all he does. He just records. What's that story with Akon <laughs> said about Eminem? The dude works from like nine to five. Every day. That's Every it. Every day. Yep. That's it. Yeah. So. Nine to five music done. And he was, when it hits five o'clock, he told Akon. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. Time to go home. And like, he's what? never, usually like, a lot of artists that are this at this level, they go into business, and Eminem really hasn't. No. I don't know any business ventures that he's really gotten into and have focused Strictly on. Music. You know, he's done, like, commercials, like, for Brisk. He did Brisk Ice Tea here and there. Yeah. Small things like that, like Chrysler commercial. Small things, right? But in terms of, like, building a business besides Shady Records, which is a record label, that's obviously yeah. a business, but that's music-related. Um, there hasn't really, you know, he's been focused strictly on music. That's, I feel like that's how Birdman was kind of the same way. What do you mean? Birdman. He's just strictly music, too. Yeah, but he, yeah, I, that's true. That's yeah, true, yeah. Every, yeah. Everything is just music. I mean, I think he's next on the list, too, so that's why I was kind of. Yeah. Oh, Dre, sorry. So, yeah, Dr. Dre, too. Yeah. Obviously, he has history. Um, you know, I, I want to, I just did the Dr. Dre versus oh. Eazy-E, you know, video. And there's so many stories I want to ask him about him getting shot in his legs. A lot of people don't know that. In 1992, he got shot in his legs. Imagine that happening in 2020. Dr. Dre gets shot in his leg. You know what kind of huge news that would be? That would make headlines like all Crazy. over the world. So for that to happen back then and people not really know about it is insane. So questions like that, I would like to ask, you know, um, details about certain incidents. And then the next artist, this is mainly my brother's. Favorite, yeah, Bird, Bird Man, man. Stunna Man. <laughs> that's, that's I love Bird Man. I mean, he's just an incredible person. Um, he's very loyal. He's he's a person that he'll give you his word, and he gonna make it happen. Uh, but of course, Bird Man, you know, he's been strictly music in, in the game for I think over 19, twenty years, nineteen ninety five, four, something, something like that. that. Something yeah, like that. and like I remember he was telling a crazy story. He was like, I was sixteen with a million dollars. That's crazy. You know, um, yeah. but longevity I mean, too, man. Like longevity. Cash Money Records has been the only label that's still surviving right now. Look at G Unit dead. Look at um, yeah. Rough Riders dead. Look at Death Row done. Yep. Look at uh, whatever label that I can come up. You know, I can't think of every single label that came out, but a lot of groups and labels are gone. They're finished. They're washed up. And then um, their team and who they got signed, Wayne. Drake. That's Nikki, what made the longevity. Tiger. You know, in the 90s, that like, juvenile, on, hot boys, all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, Manny Fresh. Was yeah, all that. And then 2000s, they had to continue. Wayne got hot in late 2000s. And then in 2010, Drake, Nikki, Tyga. Yeah. Like, it, it just, now I'm sure in 2020, Every couple next of years, decade, for 20 years, somebody just came hot, hot, hot. It's crazy. Yeah. I think in the 2020, the next decade, he's going to find somebody else yeah. again. And boom, it's going to happen again. It's happen again. So, I shout out to be, Birdman. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah, shout out to Birdman. That's why I want to bring him on here. Legendary. Um, next person, T.I. T.I., for me, introduced me to the South when it comes to music. Yes. He is one of my favorites. T.I., to me, excuse me, doesn't have a classic, but he has very good to great albums, right. I think. And I love his King album. I love T.I. versus T.I.P. I love... Paper Trail, I love No Mercy, I love Paper Work, I believe it was the next one. Yeah, I love so many T.I. albums, Urban Legend too. let's not forget those. Um, so T.I. just has been consistent to me. He has an album comes out in October 16th, a new one, no so mercy. I can't wait. Oh, yeah, um, I can't wait to hear that new album comes out on October 16th, so shout out to T.I. Next is Jay-Z, obviously a legend, been in the game over 25 years 
the most consistent artists besides Eminem, both of them. They've been consistent yeah. through the dicks. It's, dick. it's like they can disappear for like a year and, or three can, years. Yeah, three, four years and yeah, come back and come everybody back will and still be hyped. Still yeah. sell 500,000 copies. Yeah, they'll be all be hyped crazy, going yeah. crazy. Yeah. Exactly. So Not a lot of artists that can do that. No, I mean, it's only Jay-Z and Eminem right yeah. now. You know, yeah, you're right. that's really about it. I can't really think of anybody else that's really been that consistent with the music. Drake, let's see, in the next 20 or uh, 10 years, if, you know. I could see that happening. Yeah, I mean. Since he's been yeah. killing it. For so, Jay-Z, business-wise, obviously, music, longevity. I would love to talk about history with him, too. He obviously has a lot of history. Next, Lil Boozy. The reason why we chose him, I know it's kind of throwing people off, but the reason why we chose Lil Boozy was because um, he just has great interviews. Interviews are so direct. Yeah, he, and he's, he's just very on point. He's like, very like, honest. Tell, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's and very he's, honest, and he's kind of funny sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> he's very honest and direct. That's why I like about him. He like won't, he won't play the political route. He'll just say Bad directly ass. with no filter what it is. So, next on the list, Gucci Mane. I mean, one of the legends. Living legend. You know, um, there, and you know, we would love to to get him on the show. He's 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 he built a whole new label, the new Ten Seventeen. Yeah, he's signing a lot of a artists. A lot of there. artists. Yeah. And his just the way he reinvents himself came out completely more friendlier, more approachable, you know, not on drugs, you know, now he's, you know, rehabilitated yeah, himself. himself like it's, you know, I would love to talk to him about that, you know, cuz that's that's hard to do especially in the public eye where everybody's judging you, everybody's assuming things. So, you know, that's I love Gucci for that and I love his journey throughout his music. Next is the game. The game. We like to say motherfucking game. Motherfucking game. Yeah, I like to talk like him just because he's a G. (laughs) (laughs) So the game, obviously, he has history with 50. Uh, I love his his journey as well, how he went from, you know, being under G-Unit to basically going solo, which is hard to do, man. When you're battling your former label and then trying to maintain your relevancy through that, uh, it was just dope to see. I would love to talk about, you know, intricacies, you know, little stories that he's, he's had and I would really want. He's one of my favorite. He's one of my favorite artists too. No, no, you know, no, no, um, yeah. I love the documentary. I love Doctor's Advocate. I love the Red Album. I love LAX. Um, what was his recent one? Uh, Born to Rap, something like that. I think Born to Rap. Yeah, I think so. The one with all. Yeah, Born to Rap. Yeah. So, um, I love that album too. So there's a, quite a few. Um, but yeah, Game is you know one of the West Coast legends as well. Yeah, I was born to rap. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next artist, another West Coast G, Kendrick Lamar. I know he should have been earlier. We kind of just, I don't know, I was just thinking of artists, and he yeah. popped up in my head. Kendrick hasn't released music since 2017, but when he drops an album, I think this year, it's going to explode because he is amazing at talking about current topics. And There's been a lot that's happened in 2020 alone. I feel, so, like, I feel like he can be an artist where he can just disappear and come back and just. Yeah, it's very I hard to do. Like yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So 2017 was the last time. I remember that's when I started my YouTube channel. In uh, April, well, I don't know when the album dropped, March 2017, something like around early 2017. And it was huge. So when he comes back with an album, I really want to hear it. Uh, he's just a very interesting individual, someone who I I would love to pick his brain about a lot of things. Uh, next, Master P. What 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 else do I have to say? The guy the guy was serious about owning his masters, serious about business early on. Taught a lot of artists that you have to own the music that you release, and you know I love that message that he gave to people. And he finessed. Chameleon told this. Story. Yeah, he finessed, crazy story. He finessed. Yeah. I think Universal it was. Yeah. Um, out of ten million dollars, ten. I thought it was more than that. No, I think it was ten million. For real? Yeah, it was ten million dollars. I have pretty good memory on this stuff. I think it was $10 million. And he finessed the whole label out of that. Got his check and dipped. And finessing music labels, I love it because music labels love to fuck artists in the ass. And they they don't give a shit about artists if they starve. So whenever an artist gets one on them, it's beautiful. So shout out to Master P. Great, great business guy. He's doing right now. He has rap noodles. He has rap snacks. I love those chips, man. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, he has those. They taste really <laughs> hey, good. Sour those, cream of the Dab Ranch. Meagles. Yeah, that's sour cream of the Dab yeah, Ranch. Those. Oh, they're so good, man. I, I wish I could find more of them. I hope he expands that because Rap Snacks are really good. So shout out to Master P building his brand. Shout out to Master P. Next, the DOC. The reason why I chose the DOC, if you're not familiar, is this guy was arguably probably in the early 90s one of the greatest hip-hop artists that would have been. Why I say this is because 
you dropped an album, and then immediately after that, probably six, five, six months later, he got into a car accident and lost his voice. So he couldn't record music anymore. But what he did, besides just giving up on life and saying, hey, you know, I'm done with everything, what he did was he started writing for other artists, and he was under Dr. Dre. So he helped Snoop Dogg form his writing, you know, form his delivery, all that early on in the 90s. He helped Eminem, the same thing. He was basically the writer, you know, behind the scenes for a lot of artists under Dr. Dre. I'm not saying he wrote for Eminem or Snoop Dogg. Don't get it twisted. I'm just saying he was very vital in all of that. And he's just a genius when it comes to the music. I feel like if that accident would have never happened, he would have been one of the greatest rappers. A lot of people feel like that. It's not just me. Uh, he had that image of Tupac and Biggie. He had the charisma, you know, the personality, all that. But that accident, unfortunately, stopped him from being able to release music. But he still delivered in his pen game. You can still write. He still has talent. So I would love to get his story and talk more about that. Um, next on the list, Ja Rule. Ja Rule. I love, despite me being a you know, 50 fan, I love Ja Rule's music as well. Um, he's had so many hit records. You cannot deny it. I don't want anybody to be like, oh, you know, Ja Rule, this, he fell out. It doesn't matter what happened. You cannot deny the great music. Nowadays, you know, his records, you know, always on time, pops off still. Yeah. Uh, I think Mesmerize with Ashanti, it's called, pops off still. You have one with Drake on it? Yeah, it's always on time. Oh, always on time. Yeah, so a lot of records he has that are classics that, to me, I still bump. And I would love to talk to him about his journey. And obviously, the 50 story, if he's willing to talk about it, would be very interesting to me. His voice was very... Very unique and, like, yeah. you know, aggressive, you know, yeah, yeah. which is... Like a pop which smoke, when I you was know, young, like, when I, you know, that's what I would like about his voice yeah. and the way his music was so good. You know. Yeah, very good. I was, great. I, was a, I was a fan. I was a huge fan. Like that one, I'm sorry, man. That one, 50 came. Yeah, great writer, though, man. Like, he's he's very talented writer. I'm surprised he doesn't do more writing for other artists. So, shout out to Ja Rule. Uh, next, Lil Wayne. Uh, he's a legend, obviously. Uh I want to talk about what I would want to talk about Lil Wayne is how the hell um, from being a kid till now, how does it feel being in hip hop still? Because, dude, the guy was like 13, 12 yeah, in hip hop and then just blossomed into one of the greatest rappers that we've ever heard. And that journey is just very interesting. There's so much that I would love to talk to him about when it comes to that journey. And just, you know, like, did, how does he feel about Drake kind of taking over the throne? Does he... Did he feel some type of way when it happened? Was he happy that it happened? Because a lot of artists don't like that. You know, when they're the main artist, they're like, you know, they have artists signed to them, like, hell no, I'm not going to make this guy bigger than me because, you know, you can get bigger and then say F you to me or whatever the case may be. They get very, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, jealous, envious, or yeah, like, they get, like, scared that this guy's going to be so much better than them. And Lil Wayne just kind of let his artists blossom. Nicki Minaj, yeah. Tyga, you know, Drake, and everybody else that was signed under Young Money. So... I would love to talk about talk to Wayne about a lot of that Young stuff. Money, cash money, they were all like that. Yeah. When it comes to just open book, do whatever you want. Just, you know, don't lock these artists up in some kind of crazy. Yeah, Birdman said but open book to do whatever you want. Yeah. So that's what I like about, you know, the whole cash money, young money. They, nobody felt, I'm special. you know, nobody seemed like it was, they were jealous of each other. It was beautiful. Next, Snoop Dogg. Obviously the history once again. And I love that Snoop Dogg, you know, I like, I like that we got to see, I remember seeing a photo of a couple of weeks ago of Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, you know, you can tell they got old and they're just chilling on the lawn. It's so sick. They're just like laying there next to each other. Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, they got, they're old now. It's like, yeah. it just, I, I don't know. There's beauty in that seeing an artist get older right. and just enjoy their life. And Snoop Dogg has so much history, man, before I was even born, so much stuff that I would love to bring him here and just talk to him about everything. And he's turned, the way he's transformed his career, I remember yeah, when he first came out, people were scared of him because he beat that murder case, you know, and people were like, this guy's gangster, this guy's scary. And I remember there was an interview on Arsenio Hall. He was like, this was in 1993. He was like, man, when I get older, you guys are going to see I'm not this type of scary person that you guys think. And he proved that when he got older. Mm -hmm. Started doing shows with Martha Stewart, cooking shows. Like, yeah. you never see, you know, he has Corona commercials right now, just yeah. chilling. Like, At Snoop is a G, man. Uh, everybody loves him. Everybody loves the way he respects newer artists, older artists, you know. 
he showed respect. He just shows respect to everybody, you know, and I love Snoop Dogg for that. I just love where he's come from. So that's our list for the top 20 that we could think of off the bat. Obviously, we would love every artist that comes through, you know, whether it's old, whether it's new. Any artist that I've, you know, that's been part of my childhood, I would love to bring to. Even if they're not part of my childhood, I want to get to know their story. So if you guys obviously request artists, you guys can leave a comment below. You guys can message me, like I said earlier. If you guys want to see certain artists. Let us know. Yeah, um, it's I'm I'm yeah. open to like any any artist really. So this is just what we thought off the top. You know, we want to cross this list out. Every time the artist comes out, we want to be able to cross it out. So these twenty artists, if we can cross at least half this list, just half, we're half. I would be happy as fuck. So yes, indeed. Um, that's the artist list. Now, let's go into um. Let's see. Celebrity. This is celebrity list, I and I have mine. This is um, this is just a random celebrity list, just celebrities that we want to talk to. Um, I have one right here I need to add that is oh, really just, dope um, <laughs> that we were stupid. We forgot, but it's all Oopsie. good. I'm going to put a star next to this because star? this Burn guy um, is going to be huge. Did you see that? I don't want to say it right now, but yeah, I forgot to mention this guy. So, okay, so it's celebrity list. Uh, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you guys know I love basketball. So I watch it as much as I can, as often as I can. So number one on this list for me, to me, the GOAT, LeBron James. Oh, man. Uh, blow the whistle. Blow the whistle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blow so whistle. LeBron. Shout out to Jay-Z for that record. Yeah. It was Jay-Z, right? I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, so LeBron James, to me, man, the guy is just a really great person. You don't hear any scandalous things, any stories about him doing people wrong or anything doing wrong. Um, a, a, a legend on the court, a legend outside of the court, speaks on current topics, issues, and isn't afraid to do that. And just the overall, you know, I love to pick his brain about his friends too. From day one, he's built all yeah. his empire with his friends. From Doesn't day he one. have some of his friends even working for him? Yeah, from yeah. day one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, clutch sports, um, all that stuff. Yeah. So. He's obviously in the finals right now, killing it. You know, 10 straight, well, not 10 straight, nine straight, but 10 finals appearances. Um, it's beautiful, man. LeBron right. James, I would love to bring him on here. Next, Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about some of Jackie Chan man, stuff? Jackie Chan. <laughs> this guy, I swear to God, he has like over 100 movies or more. Yeah, record. I, I he, think I've seen like probably all of them. I love his movies. Man. They're just classic. Amazing. And we grew up on him. And he so. does his own stunts. We grew up on, you know, as a child, like, always watching his movies. Um, the guy is just incredible, man. We had his VHS cassette tapes and everything. Yep, yeah. everything. Like, yeah. I remember when we would, when we would have cable, we used to record them with VHS. Yeah, tapes. exactly. Yep. yep. Just so we can have those movies and watch yeah. them again. Yeah, that was you crazy. It's, so. That's how much we love the guy, you know. And the next person just... Coincides with Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker, obviously, because yeah. of Rush Hour. We love Rush Junta. Hour. Yeah, that's one of my favorite. I got for you, man. <laughs> it's one of my favorite. But that guy, if I see, I'm just gonna bust out laughing. Yeah, that like, guy, I'm just gonna start laughing. It's gonna be Smoke amazing, it. you know. Exactly. So Jackie Chan, and Chris Tucker just coincide with each other. Rush Hour <laughs> is my favorite movie of all time. Rush Hour one, two, and three. So I would love to get him on the show. We might have to bring Su Young too. Su Young. I don't know where she's at, but shout out to Su Young. Shout out to Su <laughs> from <Young>. Rush Hour. <laughs> If it wasn't for you either, that movie would just not be a classic. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> yes. that. that's very true, yeah. Um, next, Robert Greene. Uh, this is the writer of The 48 Laws of Power, The Art of Seduction, The 33 Strategies of War, and he did a book with 50 called The 50th Law. Uh, I've read all of those books, and they've taught me a lot, so I would love to pick his brain, you know, about how he even came up with these books. You know, just having a conversation with him would be very interesting to me. A great author, one of my favorite author, actually. So, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be just hip hop artists. The majority of this podcast is going to be hip hop. Don't get it twisted. Right. 80, 80 to ninety percent is going to be hip hop. But occasionally, I want to have conversations with just interesting people, different people. Right. So, interesting stories. Yeah. You know, random people. Yeah. So, next, Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. 
legendary uh, Tesla. Shout out to Elon Musk for making me money right now. Yeah, Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> so he's trying to bring us to Mars, which is crazy. You know, if he can pull that off while he's alive, would be the craziest feat I think ever by a human being. That's insane. You know, besides like inventing electricity or something crazy like yeah. that, like, like, like Mars, put us on Mars, a whole different planet. So you know, I like I like his mind on AI tech, AI technology. Um, you know, and how he comes up with this, man, his work schedule is insane. He has like multiple companies and, uh, it's just something that I would love to talk to him about a lot of questions. Um, next person is, you mentioned Cristiano Ronaldo is the next person. Right. Soccer player. I mean, he's just worldwide known. Like yeah. everybody knows him. Yeah. You yeah. Know, he's just super famous. Legendary soccer player. Yeah. Uh, I would love to pick his brain on, you know, cause a lot of these, a lot of these athletes and just people in general, man, to stay on top for so long is very hard. Yeah, you know, longevity is why I, I love these people. To be, you know, in something so long and stay at the top for so long, is, you know, people, people don't realize how hard that is to do. Yeah. Imagine being at the same job, right? You're just working a nine to five regular job. Right. And getting employee of the month for the next 20 to 30 years straight. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, <laughs> like people that's would look insane. at you like, is this guy like normal? Who is this guy? And that's what these guys basically have done is, yeah. you know, they've, they've done these crazy feats where it's just consistency, consistency, consistency. Next daddy Yankee. Um, this is the Latino artist that I grew up on and that I love. So he would be great to bring on here. I remember, I remember buying his 2005 album. Um, it was I don't know what it was called, but it had features from Snoop Dogg. I remember G Unit, Lloyd Banks, and Young Buck hopped on the Rumpe remix. So I would love to bring like all different types of cultures in hip hop. So bringing them, you know, through and talking about you know what inspired them to get into hip hop, I would love to do. Uh, the next artist you guys probably would not know at all. His name is. Onikatil, and he is an Albanian artist. You want to speak on this? Um, he's a very, very um, dope artist, and we grew up on him, man. Yeah, Onikatil is, uh, he's like the Tupac of Albanian rap. Basically, yeah. Yeah, he's just, I mean, the best. TBA? Like, yeah. Yeah. TBA, that's the, the bloody album. And the beats that they had was Oh, insane. my God, their beat selection is I got that incredible. Like my brother, he wouldn't listen to that. But as soon as like I brought it up to him, I was like, "Just listen to this, man. I promise you're gonna like it." He just, all right, man. Oh my god, he was just like, "Whoa, whoa, these beats. Oh my, god. the lyrics. I, you know." And at the time, we couldn't understand it too well. But you know, as we were listening to more, we learned. You know, language came back a little bit and stuff like that. Um, but the guy is just. I mean, if he goes overseas, back to Kosovo, and performs. Everybody comes like mm -hmm. the whole. He's very mi mysterious. He doesn't yeah. pop out. He, at he's all. like Eminem. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't you know, pop out. He does at his all. music. He goes away, disappears. Yeah. When he's ready to drop music, he yeah. just shows up. Yeah. He actually, I think he retired. He hasn't done music in a while. But yeah, I think he did. But um, but, but he like the music selection. Like like he said, when I was a kid, I was just mainly into American hip hop. That was my passion. So when you know he brought over you know the Albanian music, my sister was bumping it. He was bumping it. Man, just uh, the beat selection was insane. So next, Tracy McGrady. Um, this is my favorite basketball player. Uh, damn shame the back back injury that he had. It was very. It sucks. He would have had great longevity. I feel like uh, it sucks that he couldn't get a ring. But I would love to talk to Tracy McGrady. Of course, uh, next, Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, Fast and Furious. Yeah, uh, Fast and Furious. We grew up on that. So. Yeah. That's Obviously, we would love to bring Paul Walker, but, you know, he yeah, passed. Paul Walker days. would have been somebody that would have been dope to put on here. But Vin Diesel is just as good. You know, he has the whole story as well. And I just love who he is as a person. He's a very cool, chill guy. Loves people. I would just love to hear some stories of, you know, with Paul Walker making Fast and Furious. And, um, yeah, and just, just the whole how he even got into movies. I don't yeah, I haven't checked into How he got into movies. You know. Um, the next person... Um, that I put a star next to, Black Sam. For those of you that don't know who Black Sam is, that's Nipsey Hussle's brother. Now, this is the next best thing after Nipsey Hussle. Obviously, Nipsey Hussle passed, rest in peace. And I would have loved to have Nipsey Hussle on the show. He's motivated me in business 
um, in a crazy you know way. And I did a whole documentary. You guys can check it out on the YouTube channel called The Last Lap. Uh, and I put my whole blood, sweat, and tears into that documentary because I wanted people to know just how big of an impact he had on his community and how much he cared about the people around him. And his music was just amazing. He was getting better and better as time went on. He was just reaching that peak. He was right there. Victory Lab dropped. And I just, I would love to talk to Black Sam. He never does interviews, never, rarely comes out. But that would be a blessing to talk to back Black Sam about, you know, the whole journey. Or Victory Price. Yeah, so... Next, Michael Jordan. Oh, man. I didn't even know we even had him here. Oh, that's amazing. I forgot. MJ. Yeah. MJ. Obviously a GOAT. You know, um, I think LeBron's better, but we're not going to get into it because people are going to kill me right now for that. I I agree. Um, Yeah, but Michael Jordan, you know, history. um, Just, you know, being at the top for so long, man. That's another thing is a lot of these people want to talk about just longevity, man. What what – keeps you motivated to keep being great at your passion you know what what drives you to do that still I love getting into the brain of those people that do that because it's very hard to consistently deliver on something this coincides with the next person Floyd Mayweather at the top for 20 plus years never lost the fight and that's crazy and how does he deal with criticism because he gets a lot of criticism that's another thing that I would love to talk to him about he's a very hated individual at times yeah I think it's just like it has to be a mental thing where you just like, you know. You want to know a story about uh, Floyd and why I would love to talk to him? Uh, this story is insane when I heard it. Um, his best friend uh, was was going through something with his girlfriend. And um, they got into an argument, a fight on Instagram. Well, not on Instagram, but he was FaceTiming Floyd. And they got into a fight and they actually killed um he killed his girlfriend and killed himself on FaceTime video while Floyd was watching it. Mind you, Floyd saw one of his best friends kill himself and kill his wife. And then the day after, he had to go and fight. So think about that mentally. How do you deal with that mentally on a mental level? It's insane. How did he deliver in that fight? He ended up winning, of course, because he doesn't have a single loss. So that would be something I would love to ask him is how does he deal with these things mentally? Why you know, throughout this journey, how and why did he block everything out? Obviously, you know, uh, there's a lot of criticism and things when you're in the public eye, and these people are just human, you know. So to deal with these things of criticism while your best friend's killing his wife and then killing himself on camera and they have to go fight after that is very hard to do, you know. So I would love to talk to Floyd about that and just other things in life that he's been through because a lot of people judge him harshly, but I don't think he should be getting judged like that, so... Uh, next, Mike Tyson, legend, obviously. Oh, um, his story, he's just scary, man. So just to talk to him is insane. Yeah, I would love to ask him about that scene where, you know, the whole Tupac thing. Yeah, he's uh, been a, he's been into a lot of things yeah. when it comes to revolving Tupac, and a lot of hip-hop history, too, Mike Tyson has. Yeah, that guy. Um, so, fights. Yeah. Conor McGregor, just because he has a crazy personality, I would love to talk to him. <laughs> um, the next person, Dave Chappelle, is my favorite comedian of all time. We went to go see him live in 2017. Yes. It was crazy. Um, Dave Chappelle is just one of the most interesting people to me ever, and I would love to talk to Dave Chappelle. Um, the guy the guy is a comedic genius, and he knows his timing is so great, and he knows how to talk about certain topics and make it hit home with everybody, you know? And he doesn't care about being uh, canceled. You know, cancel culture, like, oh, cancel Dave Chappelle. He just speaks his mind, says what he wants, doesn't care how people feel, and he continues doing it. And I love that about him. Doesn't change. Next, Jet Li. This is one of your favorites. So, <laughs> Jet Li. Well, Jet Li. I mean, it was the same like Jet Li, Jackie Chan. I grew up, you know, watching the, the Rise to Honor video game. Yes, the best video game ever. If you haven't played that, just get yourself a PS2 and play it. I promise you won't be disappointed. The fighting, it's crazy. Uh, but no, nah, just Jet Li. I mean, he's just, um, you know, he's just good at what he does when it comes to his movies. He's incredible. And, um, you know, I just wanted to see how he, like, what made him get into, you know, martial arts and, uh, and, and is, acting. And is his influence Jackie Chan? I th- is he influenced by Jackie yeah, Chan? I don't remember. Yeah, I think he. So is, I know Jackie Chan was influenced by Bruce Lee. Right, right. So, um, what is Jackie Chan? I, mean, I feel like a lot of people were influenced. 
school is my Bruce Lee. Oh, obviously. Movies. Bruce Lee yeah. is like the GOAT, you know, like when it comes to martial arts. And, and I, I think Jet Li and Jackie Chan, they did a, a, a movie together, if I'm not mistaken. I might have that wrong. <laughs> I think so. Sure. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Jet Li would be great. I love his rice on her video game. Um, it, I would love to talk to him about that, too. Maybe you can make a sequel. It would be crazy. Um, next, Brian Cranston. For those of you who don't know, if you've ever seen the show Breaking Bad, um, that show is just legendary. When I saw it, I was like in awe of that show. That show, if you haven't seen Breaking Bad, please. I think it's on Netflix. I don't know what it's on. Please watch it. It is my favorite show of all time. Yes, I said all time, and I've watched an insane amount of shows. He's just an interesting individual. I've seen a, quite a few of his interviews, and uh, I liked Malcolm in the Middle, too. He starred in that. Don't forget about that. Malcolm in the Middle was a really good show, too. So how he transitioned from Malcolm in the Middle, a uh, funny dad, you know, raising a bunch of kids, to all of a sudden becoming, you know, this huge drug dealer in a totally different show. That that switch from character, like from that dynamic range of character, is very interesting to me. So I would love to talk to him about that and how he made that transition. Next, we have a star to this guy, too, because it would be insane to get this person. Um, Who's that? Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball Z. Z. Our I'd favorite anime of all time. All like, time. Believe it or not, I still watch it right now. This morning, I this was This guy, watching. literally, this morning was watching yes. it. So. <laughs> Prince of all scenes, once again. <laughs> he loves doing those, like, voices and oh stuff. Oh, my um, God. This guy, Akira Toriyama, has never done an interview that I know of in terms of on video. On video. I, I could be wrong. If, that, if we get that interview, that would be... I'm going to Japan if I have to. I'm going oh, wherever I'll I have go to go to do the interview. I'll go anywhere. I don't care anywhere. if we have... Anywhere. Anywhere. So... You name it. That's why we want to get him... Just to talk to him about how he came up with Dragon Ball Z. How... Yeah, what, what, just, you know, he met Jackie Chan, too, which is dope. Yeah. Um, so, it would be crazy. Um, that, that would be a dream come true. He made my childhood what it is, you know? Oh, yeah. So... And he's a legend, man. A lot of people, a lot of anime people, you know, got inspiration from him. So right. legendary to get him would be just the icing on the cake of this podcast. I think I think it would be over after For me, that. It would just be a dream. Come I true. think we'd be the best podcast yeah. in the world after that because yeah. you can't you can't top that. You know, hands so. down, hands down. So all right, <laughs> narrate now. Next is the narrator for Dragon Ball Z. If you remember the guy who would do the intros. <laughs> Last time, uh, on, last Dragon time Ball on Dragon Ball Z. We love that guy's voice. <laughs> yes. And this is just something we would love to talk to, you know, about that person. <laughs> yeah, about. that guy. I love his voice. He's a beast. I think he's yeah, done he's other things. Beast. He's on steroids. So. He's a beast. And the music creator of Dragon Ball Z. I forget his name, but the guy who made the soundtrack for Dragon Ball Z, the American version. Um, oh. You know, the sounds of Dragon Ball Z, you know. Dun, 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 oh, yeah. And like Vegeta, like whenever he would come. Soundtracks and stuff? Yeah, the music oh, behind yeah, the yeah, background yeah, music. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Classics, yeah, man. Those, those All those are classics. Yeah. They're, they're incredible. We would love to bring him on there just to talk about how they came up with all that. Yeah. You know, it would be interesting. You know, I would love to talk to him about that. Perfection. And then the last person on this list is exactly. the Rick and Morty creators. <laughs> I know about Rick the show. My brother doesn't really watch it, but I love Rick and Morty. And the creators are just some geniuses because they, they actually get drunk to do their show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <they're not> taking, <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> and this is why we never get new episodes. It takes forever. They get <laughs> drunk. And they just record. Hey Morty, pass me Corona. <laughs> yeah, so it's crazy. I, I would love to see how their, their process of creating that content is. It's very unique That's and different. Insane. So. They seriously get drunk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's oh. crazy. Um, uh, so that's our list. Um, let me see. List. Let's see here. Uh, um, what else? What else? I think that's about it. I think we discussed eventually, essentially everything. I want to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, expectations, I guess. So, or let's talk about the journey a little bit more. I kind of skipped a few things a little bit. Um, if you're still here listening, let me talk a little bit more about the journey. There are some parts I ended up going over, but, um, which was cool that I want to mention. Um, so in 2000. In, I believe, 11, I was going to high school, and I had the DiverseHipHop.com website. And my friend, shout out to my friend Jacob, he, my teacher noticed that I was missing class every Wednesday. And the reason why I was missing class is because every Wednesday I would work on the website, DiverseHipHop.com. So eventually my teacher asked my friend Jacob, he was like, you know, why is he missing class? What is going on? 
I told him not to tell anybody that I have a website. He ends up telling the teacher. <laughs> so the next day I go into class and um, everybody's staring at me. And I was like, it was a very weird energy. I was like, what is going on? And then, you know, nothing happened in that class. We're just talking about math like usual. And then I was the last one to leave that class. And um, then my, my teacher pulls me to the side and he's like, you know, you never told me you had a business and a website. And I kind of at the time was like scared to be like, you know, yeah, I do. I kind of just wanted to say no, but he would know I'd be lying at that point because if he asked the question, he knew already. So what ended up happening is I told him and then the next following day on the smart, smart board, the whiteboard, um, they put my website on there and everybody was looking and everybody was talking about it. I remember leaving class and then we had lunch right after that. And my friend, shout out to Demarcus, comes up to me. He's like, yo, Quake, everybody's talking about you in lunch class. And it was just so weird. And at that moment, the reason why I mentioned this story is because at that moment, I knew that this was the path that I was going on, uh, talking about music, being anything hip hop related. It was just the journey that was set for me. And the reason why I told that story is because sometimes you have those moments when you're going through a journey of figuring out what you want to do in life. And at that moment, it just clicked for me. So that's why I wanted to bring up that story. And that's it for the podcast. Episode, season one, episode one. My name is, I hope you guys enjoyed it. For the next episode, we're going to be talking about news topics. And just leave a comment below if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, you know, give me feedback in the messages on Instagram, Twitter, whatever the case is. And we're going to talk about, you know, whatever you guys want to talk about. So shout out to everybody that listened to the first shout episode of the Diverse Mentality Howdy. Podcast, man. It's been, you know, this journey is just insane. The fact that I'm even saying that is crazy. And I know the first guest we're going to have is going to be huge. For real? Oh, I'm going to make it huge. For real? I, I got to make it somebody huge, man. <laughs> I don't know who. But if you guys have any ideas. Salad. Now, mind you, a lot of people are like, yo, can you get this person? Man, I don't have that much leverage right now. Yes. All right. We're just we're just growing right now. You know, I may have 500,000 subscribers on YouTube, but the leverage, you know, isn't there yet. But once we make it a hot podcast with you, with you all watching and listening, right. it can become the hottest podcast. And then we can have the yeah. leverage to bring these artists that I mentioned on the list and anybody else that you guys would want on here. So shout out to everybody for listening. This is the first episode and of the Diverse Metality Podcast. Yes, Thank you all for listening and have Thank a great you. day. Thank you. Peace out. We can't do it without y'all. Exactly. Peace. Peace.